get to today's lesson, let's do a quick recap on what we've learned so far relating to volume. A prism is a 3D object where two faces are the same shape and in between them are a set of rectangles that connect them. A pyramid or a comb, however, is the same base shape, however, extended into a point. To find the volume of prisms, we first find the area of the base. And from there, we can multiply it by the prism's height. Whereas if we wanted to find the volume of a pyramid or cone, we could take the volume of that prism and divide it by 3. It turns out that the volume of a pyramid or a cone is exactly one-third of the volume of a prism that has the same dimensions for its base shape and the same height. In this lesson, we're going to look at the volume of spheres. A lot of times we relate the volumes of shapes to sort of what their base shape is. And a sphere has a base shape that is sort of like a circle. And although the area of a circle is pi r squared, the volume of a sphere is a little bit different. We still use pi in the formula, but our formula for the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds multiplied by pi times r cubed. Or another way to think about it is 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Remember that r is the radius of our sphere. We can define a sphere just by its radius. Let's look at a quick example. Find the volume of this sphere given its diameter. Our formula for the volume of a sphere is equal to 4 times pi r cubed all divided by 3, or 4 thirds pi r cubed. We have a radius in the formula, but we're given a diameter. Remember that the diameter is just equal to 2 times the radius. So if our diameter is 6, we can solve for r, where r will be equal to 3. So now we can plug our radius of 3 into our formula for the volume of a sphere, 4 times pi times 3 cubed, all divided by 3. Using our trusty calculator, we see that 4 multiplied by pi, then multiplied by 3 cubed, so 3 in brackets, to the exponent 3 equals 339.292 and then we have to divide by 3 to get 113.0973. So when we want to round, we're going to put a dot over our equal sign and round this to one decimal place, 113.1 centimeters and our units are cubed because we're talking about the capacity inside a 3D object. Let's take a look at another example where we have a can of tennis balls and we want to figure out how much empty space is in this can. Notice how our can is in the shape of a cylinder and we have three spheres inside of them, all three the same, all three of them tennis balls. We're given our radius of our spheres being five centimeters and the height of the can being 30 centimeters. The assumption we can make here is that this cylinder exactly fits these three tennis balls. So the top of our cylinder is touching the uh, top of that tennis ball that's lying on top. So here's what we have to do in order to find the volume of empty space. We know that our volume of empty space is going to equal the amount of space inside the cylinder, so the volume of the cylinder, draw that cylinder there, and then we're going to subtract the volume of those three tennis balls. So the volume of a tennis ball, so the volume of our cylinder, or sorry, our sphere here, and we're going to have three of them. So when we find our total volume here, or I'll put my volume uh, total, uh, or I guess our uh, volume of empty space here is going to be the volume of our cylinder, but subtract the volume of all three of these tennis balls. Well, let's start the volume of the cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared. That's the area of the base of the cylinder. And then multiply that by our height. 
And the volume of each of these spheres we just learned was 4 thirds times pi r cubed. And because we have three of them, we're going to need to multiply this by three. We can do a little bit of simplification before we start inserting our numbers. We can see that 4 thirds pi r cubed times 3, we have a multiply by 3 and a divide by 3. So when we multiply and divide by 3, they sort of cancel each other out. So we're just left with 4 times pi r cubed left over. So let me just finish off by writing this as pi r squared h subtract 4 times pi r cubed, where those two threes, one multiplying, one dividing, have cancelled out. We can now plug in our numbers. So pi is a number, it's an irrational number, so we'll write the symbol pi. Our radius here is 5 centimeters, so 5 squared, multiplied by the height of 30 centimeters. Then subtract 4 times pi, and then r again is 5, and that is cubed. Well, 5 squared is 25. 25 times 30 is 750. So this is 750 multiplied by pi. I'll just leave the pi symbol there for now. Subtract 4 times pi times 5 cubed. 5 cubed is 125, and 125 times 4 is 500. So 500 times pi. And we could treat these like like terms, so 750 pi's minus 500 pi's is 250 pi's, or 250 pi. And we can now figure this out on our calculator by rounding it. Let me get my calculator out here. So 250 multiplied by pi equals 785 decimal 4 if we round it to one decimal place. So 785 decimal 4. And our units here are centimeters cubed. So therefore, there is about 785.4 centimeters cubed of empty space. And we can argue about what the proper dimensions are for uh, measuring how much air is in a package, but for us this volume measurement is good enough. Hello.